There is one army I've always wanted to have, but I couldn't afford the official models and I couldn't find any high quality STLs for it. Until now. With the help of this week's sponsor Frozen, who sent me their Sonic Mini 8KS, I'm going to 3D print the centerpiece for my new army for 10th edition. This wouldn't have been possible without one of my Patreons, A The Seer, who pointed me in the right direction and like many Eldar players is fed up with Games Workshop. When I unzipped the files, I was met with what I can only call an absolute mess. No real description of what they are, and not to mention how many parts there are for one model that's similar in height to an armature. This was gonna be a absolute nightmare to sort through. So I sat down and tackled the mess of the files and imported them all into Microsoft 3D Builder. When I first loaded all of the files in, I didn't realize that there were three different heads to an avatar and three different weapon options. I had to try and find the parts hiding under others and delete them, otherwise I'll have a Nurgled avatar mess, which might actually be quite cool. Now it's time for the fun part. I fired up the forges on the Sonic Mini and began printing the avatar of Kane. I should mention now, this model is $110 from Games Workshop. If you have bought this model, you probably don't want to keep watching because later on, I'm gonna show you how much it cost me and all I'll say for now is, it's shocking. I like the base that comes with the original, but I have these thematic bases that are pre-supported that I've been using quite a lot recently because my base game is terrible. It's really just another bonus of having a 3D printer. In my previous video, I got a couple of comments asking, why didn't I put the plate into the wash station to make cleanup less messy? And I have to admit, as embarrassing as it is, I forgot that there was a metal adapter that came with the wash station, meaning you can put the seven inch plate of the Mini 8KS directly in. Luckily for this video, I found it out and it works a charm. So much cleaner and as a side bonus, it cleans the build plate as well. So wins all around. I've always used the metal scrapers that come with the printers to remove the models from the plates but a few of you have mentioned using plastic razors or magnetic flex plates. I want to know what is your actual experience with these because I just don't know if I can trust the magnetic plate. I keep hearing mixed reports and with these types of bow plates that are laser etched for maximum grip, would it not just be better to use it as it is? Let me know in the comments below what your experience has been like. After curing the model and the base in the cure station, it was time to build it. And wouldn't you know it, magically, it was super easy to build being only four parts. I don't think I could go back to plastic crack and its mold lines with how easy it is to build 3D printed models. Here are some close-ups of the model fully built and oh my horse, this is beautiful. Look at all the small details picked up. This is gonna be an absolute train to paint, which saying that, I don't know how I'm gonna paint it, but I'm sure if I don't like it, I can just print another one. It's not like it's gonna cost $110 for a single model. While I'm painting, I suppose I should answer some questions you might have. The first question you want to know is, where do you get it? How much is the file? What's the total cost? First, I need to bring you back to the beginning. A couple of months ago, I just released a video on how much does it cost to 3D print Death Corpse of Krieg. And at the time, it was my most watched video, bringing loads of new friendly faces to the channel and to the Discord. One of those was the Seer himself. Before he came along, the only files for Elda that I knew about were on cost, but this man opened my eyes. Our hero came across a picture of an avatar of Kane on a website called Sketchfab. And I'll be honest with you, I've never heard of it before. He sent me the link, but it's where a lot of 3D creators post up pictures of their artwork that you can actually zoom in, pan around, see how well detailed the model is, how many vertices it has, literally everything you would want to know for a model which raises a point that has bugged me for quite a while. 
Why can't cults or mine mini factory have something like this? This is a much better way to look at files. Compared to cults and its very slow pictures, this makes it look so outdated. Where were we? Oh yes, our hero found Sketchfab, but there was one problem. You can't buy or download models from Sketchfab. Well, at least these models that encroach on a certain IP. It is a treasure trove of material and you should go and check it out. As far as I'm aware, it's okay to talk about this because it's basically a gallery of fan-made art. So where did our hero go next to find the avatar of Kane? Well, this is where it gets a bit tricky, but before I answer that, at this moment, I've realized something. I forgot the tabard or loincloth, I'm not quite sure what it is. I only realized when I looked at the official photos online and was confused why there was a long flowing loincloth and mine is rocking a short king. I fired up the Mini 8KS and loaded the rest of the cloth into a plate along with some other things for a video that I was challenged for but you'll find out more about that in the next couple of weeks and it's going to be a good one especially for people on the fence about 3D printing. It's time to answer those questions from earlier. If you wanted to find this model for yourself, then be prepared to visit the, how can I say this, alternative website to Patreon, which by the way, if you do want to support the channel and join possibly the best Discord in the universe, then become a Patreon or a YouTube member today. Shameless plug aside, it's a bit of a tricky one because I don't want to say it flat out for Games Workshop to target it. Although it is a Russian hosted website, so I don't even know if they can do anything about it. A few other creators have had to open up shop there and I can say it's been a real boost to the 3D printing space for one-to-ones from some of the best creators out there. The file cost around $20. It's listed as a one-off of 1600 Russian rubles but that's the other problem. You aren't going to get the same buyer protection on this site as you would on Cults or My Mini Factory. So when you do find it, my advice is to buy off the creators that you recognize and know have a good standing. In usual fashion for this channel, while cleaning the airbrush after I was finished with the tabardless model, I managed to hit the top of the head and break off his hair. <laughs> Luckily, it was fixed with a trap of glue. This is a bit of a weird one, but I've just 3D printed out the loincloth or tabard, whatever it's called, for the avatar of Kane. And I've just realized that I don't care. <laughs> I don't know how to put it any other way, but I've tried a lot of different techniques with this model. And I've tried to make it look like it's like a, a molten metal, like Sergio Cavo's. I really tried to see if I could try and emulate any kind of aspect of that. And I feel like I haven't. It just looks like lasagna with some fluorescent paint on it. The total cost of resin to print it was a measly $2. So it's only $22 all in for a $110 model. And that is such a difference. But if you thought that that model was good, then boy, oh boy, you need to watch this video next because I 3D printed a Alpha Swarm Lord that's better than anything GW have put out. And as always, I want to give a huge thanks to my Patreons and YouTube members. Without your support, I wouldn't be able to do videos like this and I'll see you all in the Discord.